Hello, my name is Roselle and today I'm going to do chapter 5 in this book. If you haven't done it yet, subscribe to my channel. The red button is over there. You can also find me on Facebook, Theo e Virtuoso, and Instagram, Theo e Virtuoso, where you know when and what I'm going to publish next. I also have a website, theoevirtuoso.com, where you can find all the videos that I publish. There are music theory videos, tutorials on Discovery Music Theory by ABRSM, past and sample exam papers by ABRSM in the new online format from 2020, piano tutorials and musical quizzes where you can test your knowledge and see if you need a revision. Thank you for watching and enjoy it! Bye! Okay, this chapter 5 starts with exercise 1 where we need to circle the type of interval. So, first we need to identify the number because some intervals are perfect, some others are major. The perfect intervals are fourth, fifth and eighth. All the other ones are major. If it's perfect, it could be diminished, augmented. If it, if it is major, it could be minor, diminished or augmented. So, in the first example, we have Re, Sol, D, G. First, we count Re, Mi, Fa, Sol. It's a fourth. Now, a perfect fourth is two tones and a half. So first of all, we draw our keyboard. Okay, so Re, Sol, one, two and a half. And this is perfect. The second example has the notes La and So sharp. Now make sure that you read them in the correct clef, otherwise you're going to make this possibly wrong just because you read the notes incorrectly. So, La Sol is obviously a seventh, but if you want you can count La, Si, Do, Re, Mi, Fa and Sol. And when we count, we do consider the starting and ending note. So A7. Now, as I said in other videos, um, I, I've created a technique that allows you to um, identify which the seventh and sixth easier. If you flip the interval over, so instead of having la so sharp, you have so sharp la, you make the seventh a second. Then identify what kind of second it is and then we'll go from there. So let's do one step at a time. So sharp la, so sharp la is a minor second because the major second is one tone. So I'd recommend always start uh, with considering the distance, your orientation distance as perfect or major. Then if you add a semitone, either on a side or on the other side. Therefore, you increase the distance of the notes. You make it augmented because you extend the interval. If you have one semitone or tone less, you shorten the distance. Therefore, you make the interval diminished or minor. But always have in mind a perfect and major. From that kind of key distance or orientation distance, then you count. Now, sol la is a tone and that will be a major second because we have one semitone, it's a minor second. Now, a minor second, if reflipped over, becomes a major seventh. So this interval is major. And by the way, considering the A minor scale, for example, this will be the leading note and the leading note is a major seventh away from the tonic. Okay, next one. This is the tenor clef and 
um, you know, you don't need to remember this um, for this exercise that this is called the tenor clef. But if you know the clefs in order, the C clefs in order, you will have soprano, mezzo soprano, alto, tenor in baritone. Okay, so tenor clef is here. Now you don't remember what to, uh, how to read the notes in 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 um, the tenor clef. Well, don't worry about it because this is middle C. So you can count the notes, okay, from the middle C line. Or you can remember that if this is middle C, this will be D in, in the treble clef. So the tenor clef is treble clef minus one. Let me do it better. Minus one, okay? So sol becomes um, fa and this is sharp, okay? So call the notes as they are, as we said. So fa sharp and Do. Hmm? This is middle C. And it has been naturalized because it was sharp, three sharps, Fa, Do, Sol. And it has been naturalized. So this is Do natural. Now, Fa, Do is a fifth. Fa, Sol, La, Si, Do. A fifth is three tones and a half. So let's see if a perfect fifth, if fa sharp do is a perfect fifth. One, oh, sorry, fa sharp, so one, two, and three, but not the half, the half is missing. Let's count again. One, two, and three. So instead of perfect, we have a semitone less. Therefore, is diminished. The alto clef, same as the tenor, opposite. is This is middle C. Soprano, mezzo soprano, alto. Middle C. Therefore, is treble clef plus one. La becomes C si, and C si becomes Do. Now, C si, Do, B, C si is a second, okay, a consecutive. The, these are two consecutive notes and they are one semitone apart. Therefore, the second is minor. The penultimate example, we have two flats, okay, this is bass clef, F clef, so this is fa, and this is a C, but it has been naturalized, so it's not B flat, but only B. Now, this is a fourth, we, you can count, fa, sol, la, C. The fourth is two and a half tones apart, so... Fa, one, two, and three. So not two and a half in this case, but there are three. One, two, and three. So basically we extend the distance between the two notes, between the two notes that make a fourth. So instead of perfect, we make it augmented. Treble clef, but lots of flats. So please do call the notes as they are. Mi flat and so flat. Here, this is flat. Is a third, okay. A third is two tones. So one and a half. So it's not two tones, but it's one and a half. So the distance is decreased. Therefore, from major, because the, the third could be major or minor, in this case, from major, it becomes minor. And this is it. So guys, my suggestion is, uh, with the, um, a little bit of knowledge, you can uh, sort out all the issues here. First, you need to call the notes as they are. So mind the um, accidentals and the clefs. 
okay? Then you need to remember that the perfect intervals are fourth, fifths and octaves. Then from there you need to remember that the fourth is two tones and a half, the, the fifth is three tones and a half and then the other ones are um, like one tone and two tones. So easy. So one tone, two tones, two and a half, three and a half. So the odd numbers are the perfect, the, the perfect intervals, basically. Okay, does this make sense? Let me know if not. Let's go to exercise two. So in this exercise two, we need just to name the intervals, uh, giving the number and the type. So, you on the top of the page, this you can't see it here on the screen, but you have a box where there was a, basically a recapitulation of what we said before. A major becomes augmented if you add a semitone. The, if you take out a semitone from the perfect, it becomes diminished. A minor, if you take it from the major interval. So, let's go on to our second example we have so augmented fourth the type and the number um dore is a second now let's do again our keyboard because i think that that is the best thing that we could do here to understand and make things clearer okay And three. Hmm? Dore sharp. Dore is a second. Hmm? Uh, the major second is a tone apart. This is one tone. And we have an extra semitone. So instead of major, because we increase the distance, we make it augmented. In the second example, we have the tenor clef. Now, we did say before that the tenor clef is treble clef minus one. Or you can always count from middle C here. So, do, si, la, so, fa, mi, re. Hmm? Re, so, so, flat. Re, sol is a fourth. Okay, you can always do it here as well. One, two, three and four. Hmm? So, it's a fourth. So, a fourth, as we said, a perfect fourth is two and a half tones. Let's see if re so flat are two and a half tones apart. So, one and two, because this is G flat. So, one and two. If you're not familiar with the keyboard, you can always do like one, two and a half. This is G and this is G flat. So you go backwards. And by going backwards, you understand that the distance is reduced. Therefore, our interval is not perfect, but diminished. The next interval, Re, bass clef, Re, so flat. This is the fifth, So, La, Si, Do, Re, fifth. The perfect fifth is three tones and a half. So let's count. We can go down or up, it doesn't matter. Um, so we can consider So flat, Re, or Re, so flat. Let's go backwards. One, two, Three and a half and another half. Let's do that again. Just to double check. One, two, three and a half and another half. So from the perfect interval, we move outwards. So it's not a perfect fifth but it's a an augmented 
fifth. Now, in the alto clef, treble clef plus one. Mi becomes fa, and re flat becomes mi flat. Okay, fa mi flat is a seventh. Okay, because fa is the next note after e, so um, it's a seventh. The seventh could be major or minor. Now this is too far. When I was a student, I used to count, but now I found out a, a different system that I talked about in the first exercise, but I repeat it here. We flip the interval over. So instead of fa, mi flat, we consider mi flat, fa, okay? So as if the note would be here. Then we make it a second. We identify which kind of second it is. So mi flat, fa is a tone apart, so it's a major second. If we re-flip it over, a major second becomes a minor seventh. So this is a minor seventh. Now, I repeat that again. From the seventh, you flip the, the interval over. So instead of considering fa, mi flat, you make it a second. So mi flat, fa. Sorry, this is incorrect indeed. Um, mi flat, fa. Now, um, this is a second, a major second, because it's two semitones apart, so it's one tone. A major second, re-flipped, becomes a minor seventh. That's it. Okay? I hope this is helpful. Tenor clef minus one. Treble clef minus one. So C becomes La and Do flat becomes B flat. Now, this is a, um, a second, okay? A major second is one tone. So La, B flat is one semitone. So is a minor because from the major we reduce the distance and it becomes minor. In bass clef we have three flats. Watch out, watch out for the flats always, guys. Because if we call these notes E instead of E flat, we might make the interval incorrect. So, mi flat, as I said, and another mi flat. Now, mi flat, mi flat is the unison. If we flip it over, it's a perfect octave. We don't need to count. The alto clef, treble clef plus one, plus lots of sharps. La plus one equals C. Now, is C flat, a C sharp? Fa, do, so, re, la, mi. No. I'm counting them in order. Re becomes mi. Is this sharp? Fa, do, so, re, la, mi. Yes, so mi sharp. C, mi sharp. Let's go back. Uh, uh, first of all, the number. Mi, fa, so, la, si is a fifth. So, a, f a, me a perfect fifth is three tones and a half apart. So, from B, one, two, three, and we reached E sharp. Now, what we could do is that we got onto E and then we add the accidental. So, let's do it that way. One, two, three and a half, and this is perfect, but we have to add another sharp, a sharp. So we basically reduce the distance. We reduce it. So it's not perfect, but diminished. Sorry, guys, I had a technical problem on the last one. Anyway, we have G sharp and B sharp. They are um, two tones apart. So it is a major third. Sorry about it. Okay, here we have to do the same exercise than before using the chromatic intervals and explaining the passages. So, an augmented third 
is a major third that has been raised by a semitone. Now we need to do the other way around. This is do la sharp la double flat is a sixth. So a minor sixth that has been lowered by a semitone. A minor lowered further is a diminished interval. A major sixth further raised by a semitone becomes a, an augmented an augmented seventh is a always guys always the orientation distance is a major second that has been raised up you increase the distance, you make it augmented. Raised by a semitone. Now, they want us to say more and more, do, do flat. Okay, this is a perfect, uh, sorry, this is an octave, but it's not perfect because this is not do, but do flat. So, instead of do, do, that is the perfect distance, what do we do? we decrease the distance. So, we make it from perfect to diminished. Why? Because the octave can be major, and therefore that would be minor, but it's perfect. It's just the way it is. Don't uh, ask yourself why, uh, the what's and why's. Just remember the octave is a perfect interval. So, from the perfect interval, we decrease the distance, therefore we make it diminished. You can also say, well, the minor, the major becomes minor, minus one semitone is minor, the minus one, is, m minus one semitone is diminished. But the perfect is minus one semitone becomes also diminished. Is that confusing? No, because we know that the intervals are shorter anyway, shorter than normal. And that's enough for us, okay? So, uh, do, do flat, we shorten the distance from perfect becomes diminished. So, is a diminished octave a perfect octave that has been lowered by a semitone. Now, the same example, opposite, from do do, perfect octave, we, we increase it, increase the distance by a semitone, so we make it augmented. So, augmented octave, a perfect octave that has been raised. All done. I hope this was useful and clear. Always, always have in mind an orientation distance, which is perfect and major. From there, you figure it out. Let's go on to exercise four. In this exercise four, we need to write the note to make the interval that is named here. So, let's go step by step. They say here, uh, please note that the interval should be higher. Now, this is in bold. You have no idea, guys, how many students, how many candidates write it lower. Higher. They want it higher. And that's also a part of the question. Mm. Augmented octave. So, first we write a perfect octave. La la. And then... We have to raise it by a semitone because the distance is augmented. So, la sharp. In the second example, 
we have a diminished sixth. Now, first of all, and flats, first of all, we identify the note. So, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si is B. In this bar, B is flat. So, let's see if B must remain flat or if we need to add another accidental. Okay. Re, si, flat, is a sixth. And the sixth can be flipped over. By doing this, we make them thirds. Now, same as before, if the third is minor, the six will become major. If it's diminished, it will become augmented. That's all you need to know. Okay? So, let's see. B flat, re. Mm. Okay, it, this is, there is a flat here. I'm just going to write it and then I'll rub it out if I need. B flat, re is, we need, I'm afraid, we need our keyboard. Okay, B flat, re, um, a major third is two tones apart, so one and two. So it is a major third. And we need a diminished six, so we need to make it augmented. Now to make it augmented, we can't change re because it's written here on the score. Um, so we need to increase the distance by changing this note here. So not B flat, but we need a note further down, B double flat. So let's do it again. We have B flat D is a major third, one and two tones apart, but we need an augmented, so the opposite of this. We need an augmented third. So in order to make it augmented, we need to change the distance by, we need to change this note because this is fixed in this exercise. So we have to make it, we have to uh, add another flat. Now you can tell me, I'm going just to fit them both in the box because uh, it must be clear when you, when you look it. Okay, so I'm on the edge. I can't do it very neatly. Mm. Okay, that's much better. Um, and you can tell me, well, why don't we call it la? If you call it la, you make this interval a fifth. So you can't. Remember, first thing, the number. Re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, bi. We need to call this note B. Now, if they would exist, we could like use triple flats or triple, triple sharp. They don't exist, um, but we would otherwise have to use them. OK, this is very, very important. We can't use the enharmonic equivalence because otherwise we change the nature of the interval. And that's another story. And then you can tell me, but is it not the same? Uh, in terms of sound, is it not the same? Yes, it is the same, but the chord will be different because you know that D, B and F is a chord, but D, A, F is another chord, okay? Then you can add flats or sharps, whatever you like, but you make another chord. So it is important for harmony. I hope this is clear. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, we have four sharps, so this is Do sharp, okay, and we need to make an augmented fourth. So from two tones and a half, we need to raise it up by a semitone. So let's count. One, two, ah, first of all, yes, the number. So we need to write the, ne the, the note. To make it a four, do, re, mi, fa, we need to write an F. This F is sharp already, so let's see if we need something further, the sharp. So one, two, 
and a half. And this is the perfect fourth. We need it augmented. So this is already sharp, therefore double sharp. Okay. So from do sharp, one, two and a half. And this is the perfect. I need a further semitone up, so double sharp. Next one, a diminished octave. Oh, I love octaves because they are so easy. I just put it an octave higher, so re, re. Now this is a perfect octave. We need to, we need a diminished one, so a flat. Now, tenaclef. Ay, 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 I don't know it. Don't panic. This is first is treble clef minus one, and second, this is middle C, so this is B. Okay, no sharps, no flats. B. We need a diminished seventh. Now, when you need to write it, let's flip it over straight away. We need an augmented second, opposite, opposite augmented second. Now, to make it a second, we need this note. It could be it could be sharp, flat, I don't know. Let's make it more neat because this is very, very important. So we need la, okay? Which kind of la? Si la is a major second. Because we need it augmented, we can't change B, but we can change La by adding a flat, hmm? because we need to increase the distance by lowering it, the bottom note. So it's flat. Now, an augmented second, if I write this very note here, I make it a diminished seventh. So I need to write a C flat, sorry, an A flat. Okay, and then you rub this out because you don't need it. The alto clef, treble clef plus one. This is middle C, so you, you can count. Anyway, me plus one equals Fa. We have one flat is B flat. Augmented third, so a major third will be Fa, one and two, La. We need it augmented, so La sharp. If you don't know how to write La, you just go one and one up. Mm. There you go. An augmented sixth. Okay, let's let's use the flipping over technique. An augmented uh, six becomes a note here. There is diminished third. So la a third below is fa. Hmm? So fa. We need to make it diminished. La fa is one and two tones, so it's a major third. To make it diminished, I need to um, decrease the distance. Mm -hmm. And I can't touch this note, it's fixed because the exercise is like that. So I need to raise up this note. So they will be, there will be a shorter distance. From the major, I need one semitone to be minor and another semitone to be diminished. So one and two, two tones apart. Minus one semitone becomes from major minor, minus another semitone, it becomes diminished. And this is what we want. What is this note called? We can't call it G, we have to call it Fa double sharp. And this is a diminished third. A diminished third. Now, if I write this note up here, the same one, fa double sharp. This is an augmented sixth. 
that's my best technique, guys. Again, I found it out myself, I'm afraid, not when I was a student, but a bit later on, when I didn't need the intervals anymore. So you can't find it anywhere else. You can't find it in books. I don't think I've met anyone that knows this. So I'm sharing this with you. I hope it is helpful. Let's rub this out. A diminished third. From far sharp. Let's go to the major first. Okay, far sharp. One and two. And this is called first of all the no the note name. So fa so la. We need an A. Okay. One and two. And this is A sharp, okay? This would be the major third. We need it diminished. So minus one semitone it would be um minor. Minus another semitone it would be diminished. Therefore, what, what note is this if we call it A? That's A flat, La flat. So, Fa sharp, La flat is a diminished third. Next one, tenor clef, treble clef minus one, two sharps, Fa and Do. This note is Do, sharp then. A diminished sixth. Okay, let's flip it over. We need a third. From Do, Si, La. We need La. Now, we need an augmented third. From Do sharp, a major third is two tones apart. So, one and two. This will be La. Okay. So, it is already a major. This, as I wrote it, is a major um, a third. Now, we need to make it augmented, so we must add a semitone down to increase the distance. C is, fi is fixed in this case, so C sharp, sorry. So one, two and a half. And this note is called La flat. This is the augmented interval. Now, if we write this same note up here, we make it a diminished now, if you don't remember how to write the notes, what you could do is to think of this as a treble clef thing. So it's B flat in treble clef, so I just write B flat, okay? This in the tenor clef would be called A flat, so I don't need to think about plus one, minus one, so I just write it in treble clef. And uh, just to be safe, you see. The, the treble clef is more familiar for me, so I... Uh, if I were a student, I would use this. But if you are familiar with the bass clef, you can write in bass clef, basically. You can uh, consider the bass clef notes as orientation notes. Now, tenor clef again, minus one. Do flat, minus one is B flat. Okay, augmented second from B flat. First, the, the note, B flat, Do. Now, B flat, Do is a major Second, to make it augmented, we need one semitone above, so Do sharp. This is it. Last one. An augmented sixth from Mi. Plus one, Mi. Let's do, let's find a diminished third down. So, this is Mi. A diminished third that will be here three three things three steps below a major third is two tones let's go to the major third one and two do do is a major third we need not a minor but a diminished so we have to go backwards okay to reduce the distance from me this is the fixed note so me one and two Do is a major third, minus one is a minor, and minus two semitones is a diminished. So I need to write Do double sharp. Not Re because we make it a second, but we have to call this Do. So Do double sharp. Now from here, if I write it, again, let's use the same technique as here. 
as here. Um, this is C double sharp. So I write a C double sharp, B double sharp, basically. Okay, and this is it. Sorted. Can you let me know if this was useful, guys? Can you please write a comment? And can you please tell me if this technique helped you? Thank you very much. And let's move on to exercise five. In exercise five, we need to identify the intervals. And in the first three examples, the number is given, but we don't care because we are so good that we can find it ourselves very easily. Okay, this is a third, of course, three steps apart. Now, um, a third, a major third is two tones. So one and two. It is not one semitone below, but it's two semitones below. So from minor, it becomes diminished. octaves my favorite um, this is sol so flat so instead of the unison we go backwards okay by one semitone so instead of perfect is diminished in bass clef this is re fa double sharp d f double sharp now it is a third so re uh, so a major third from Re is two tones apart. So one and two. So Fa sharp would be a major third, but plus one semitone, it's augmented. Okay, so let's do that again. One, two and a half. So instead of two, it's two and a half, augmented. Re sharp. Re natural. Mm, that's an octave. Now, instead of two, uh, instead of the unison, we have the octave is raised up by a semitone. So it's augmented hmm? because the distance is widened. Tenor clef is treble clef minus one. Or you can count from the uh, C, middle C line. Um, so this is sol, in other words, and this is fa double sharp. So, so far is a seventh. Now, what do we do? First, we write seventh here. What do we do? We flip it over and we see what kind of second it is. So, for example, we have a uh, fa, the sharp. I'm going to write it here. Okay. Sol, fa is a major second okay now what do we do with this major second we don't go outwards but we go inwards so we reduce the the um, distance so we go backwards so sol fa is a major second minus one semitone is a minor second and minus one semitone is a diminished second now you can tell me they are the same notes and this is why we can't call it g because this is a seventh it's a very special seventh okay and we can't call it g g g okay this is can't be a perfect octave is a complicated seven but let's see what it is so major second sol fa then we add the accidentals fa sharp will be minor Fa double sharp will be diminished. 
Now you know already, if we re-flip the interval over, a diminished interval becomes augmented. So this is an augmented seventh. There you, there you go. Alto clef, treble clef plus one. C, mi, B, E. They are flats. This is sol and this is mi double flat. Now sol mi is a six. Sol, la, si, do, re, mi. Now, to calculate this complicated thing, we just make it a third. Mi sol. Mi. So, mi sol is a third. And a major th third is two tones um, apart. So, from sol, one and two. Mi flat would be the major interval. Because we have mi double flat, it means that we go further down, so we increase the distance. And by increasing the distance from G, one and two and a half, we make it augmented. So this is an augmented third. If we flip it over again, it becomes a diminished sixth. I hope this is clear, guys. Sol mi double flat is a diminished fifth, sixth. Because uh, mi double flat sol is an augmented third. Why is it augmented? Because from the major third we go backwards, we go down. We increase the distance. Now, bass clef, four sharps, fa, do, sol, re. This is C double sharp. And this is E, mi. Oh, sorry guys. Double sharp. Hmm? And this is me. This is a sixth. Mi, fa, sol, la, si, do. Okay. Now a sixth. For me, it's easy if I consider it as a third. So I flip this over, me goes here. What kind of third it is? Let's see. From me, we have one and two tones. And this would be, so do me would be the major third. However, Do is raised up by two semitones. So, major, third major, third minor, and diminished. Hmm? So, first, do mi. Let's consider do without the sharp, the double sharp. One and two. Do mi is a third. Do sharp mi is a minor third, major third, so minor third, diminished. Now, a diminished third becomes an augmented sixth. There you go. Lots of flats and the tenor clef. Oh my God, don't panic. First, you go and watch my video where I talk about the orders of the order of flats and sharps. First of all, so you know that this is si, mi, la, re, sol, do. Big elephants, eight dinosaurs, goat, cheese. So B, E, A, D, G, C. Okay. Then the notes. This is do minus one. B natural. And this is sol. Is sol flat? I think so. Si, mi, la, re, sol. Yes. Let's see what kind of third it is because this is a third. So, mi, si, one, two and a half. 
two tones will be the major third but because this is a, the the uh, distance is increased we have a a an augmented from major we go to augmented alto clef treble clef plus one la double flat becomes b double flat and fa becomes sol so this is another third interestingly but we can see that it's very different from this so sol let's go to the major um, um, third first one and two so sol si would be the major third minus one semitone would be minor minus another semitone another flat it's diminished so this is a diminished third mm? let's do that again one and two first so i start from the major uh, interval then minus one minor minus one dim uh, diminished next one treble clef fa do sol three sharps B, uh, B sharp, C sharp, and La. Now, this is a second, okay? C La is a second. What kind of second? A major second is one tone. So La, C is a tone. And it's a major second. Because B is sharp, so we increase the distance. So instead of major, it is augmented. Altena clef is treble clef minus one C mi la re this is B minus one is a flat C mi la okay it's also flat and la sharp becomes G sharp so la flat G sharp okay this is a seventh okay la si do re mi fa sol is a very strange and difficult seventh but what do we do we flip it over so La flat, G sharp. Hmm? La flat, G flat would be a major second. But G is not even natural, so it's minor, but it's diminished. Because the distance, even if we stay on the same notes, the distance decreases. So from A flat... A flat G flat is a major second. A flat G is a minor second. A flat G sharp is a diminished second. So a diminished second flipped over becomes an augmented seventh. And if you haven't watched exercise one and two, please go because I go deep into this concept in those exercises. Alto clef is treble clef plus one. So this is C flat and this is Re plus one is Mi double flat. C, Do, Re, Mi is a fourth. Now. B flat me. So a fourth is two and a half semitones apart. So one, two and a half. This would be the perfect fourth. But me is double flat. So we reduce the speed, uh, the distance. So it's diminished. From perfect, it becomes diminished. And exercise five is also done. Let's move on. Okay, this exercise six talks about compound intervals. Compound intervals are like simple but raised up by an octave and they can have two names. It's either the simple interval plus seven or compound and um, the simple interval. So... Um, for example, a major ninth is a major second plus a seventh. So seven plus two equals nine. So a perfect eleventh, it will be four plus seven. So it's a compound perfect fourth. I don't even have to count. 
A, a compound perfect fifth is a com is a perfect now five plus seven is a compound is a perfect twelve because five plus seven equals twelve. Now a diminished sixth a compound diminished sixth is also called a diminished and then six plus seven. 13th. Now we need to find out the intervals in these last ones. Okay, don't panic. We just make it simple. That's it. This is sol and this is also sol because it's la. This is do. Okay, middle C. So do, re, mi, fa, sol. Sol, sol is my favorite. It's the octave. So is the compound perfect octave. Or is eight plus seven fifteenth? Okay, eight plus seven. Um, in the tenor clef is minus one, so do becomes C, and uh, mi sharp becomes D sharp. Um, C re sharp is a third, so this is a compound third. Mm? What kind of third? Major, minor? Let's see. We, um, I write it here so I can use it also for the next one. Okay, now B, D sharp. A major third is two tones apart, so one and two, major. A major third, a compound major third, seven plus three is a tenth, so it becomes a major tenth. That's it. Okay, I hope this is useful. Very quick, because um, if you like maths, basic stuff, that's very straightforward. Let's go on to exercise seven. Exercise 7 is the equivalent of exercise 1 but with compound interval. The uh, principle is the same. You either raise the lower note up by an octave or you, you lower it down by an octave, the second one by an octave. So it's the same. B flat and fa, fa B flat. Now it is a fourth because we need to say like, we need to count one, fa, so, la, si is a fourth. The fourth could be perfect or diminished. And it's two and a half tones apart. So from fa, we count one, two and a half. It's a perfect. So it is a perfect compound, perfect fourth. Now, I, I am going to omit the term compound from now on because it's exactly the same. I just take this an octave higher, this an octave higher, this an octave higher, 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 or the opposite, this an octave lower. Mm? Depends on what you want to do, honestly. Sol fa sharp. Is a seventh. Mm? Now a seventh, we we did where well, this is a leading note, so it's a major seventh. But uh, let's calculate it together, step by step. We flip it round and uh, we consider fa sharp sol. Fa sharp sol is a minor second because it's only one semitone. Um, they are only one semitone. It's only one semitone apart, so it's a minor second. And a minor second flipped over again becomes a major seventh. There you go. And to go back to what I said in exercise one, the leading note, so one semitone below the tonic, is a major seventh. The alto clef, treble clef, plus one, mi, fa, and then it's sharp, B becomes C, natural, okay, so natural. Fa sharp C, it's a fifth, 
fa sol la si do so is a fifth the fifth is three tones and a half apart so from fa sharp we count one two three and a half and this is the perfect fifth however we have do, do natural so we go down and we make it from perfect we make it diminished let's do that again one from fa sharp one two and three not and a half so diminished in the tenor clef it's treble clef minus one or you can count from here do si la this is la and this is uh, b flat uh, la b flat this is a second okay let's um consider it here b flat hmm? it is a second what kind of second la b flat is a minor second so this interval is a com compound minor second easy easy when you like uh not consider it make the interval simple basically hmm? let's go on to the last one bass clef b flat and re sharp b flat re sharp is a third si do re now let's see what kind of third sorry guys i had a technical problem this time um so b flat and d sharp is a third and the two um, notes are two tones and a half distant from each other so b flat d would be a major third because we have another semitone it is augmented so the final answer is augmented and this is also finished in a very quick way as you may have noticed once we set things like uh, in a mathematical uh, way it's all straightforward we only need a few pieces of knowledge if you agree with me anyway exercise eight exercise eight asks us to name the intervals in the two different ways um, that we know once by using a compound the compound term the other one using the um, simple interval plus seven first we need to identify the intervals sol re flat re mi fa sol it is a fourth okay i need a keyboard and i write it here so i can use it for the whole page okay so re flat sol is a fourth we said is it perfect diminished augmented we shall see a fourth is two tones and a half so one two and a half and that will make it d but we have d flat so we increase the distance therefore is augmented now a compound augmented fourth becomes an augmented four plus seven eleventh tenor clef treble clef minus one this is me and this is a flat la flat la flat me is a fifth la si do re mi is a fifth Hmm. what kind of fifth a perfect fifth is three tones and a half apart so from me we go backwards one two three and a half with a natural a it will be perfect but because we have flat it is augmented we increase the distance hmm? so one two three and four so augmented compound augmented fifth becomes an augmented 
12, 5 plus 7. Treble clef plus 1. So fa becomes sol, B flat. This is a third, a compound third. Now, the third is two tones apart. So, 1 and 2. But we have flat, so we go backwards. 1 and a half. Therefore, it's a minor third, not a major one. And a compound minor third becomes a minor tenth. 3 plus 7. So flat, la. That's a seventh. La, so flat. What do we do? We flip it over. And we consider it as a second. Now, what type of second it is? La, so flat. One tone and a half. One and a half. So it's one semitone above the major second. Therefore, it's augmented. If we flip it over, the augmented second becomes a diminished seventh. So compound diminished seventh or diminished fourteenth. Okay, bass clef, mi, do is a sixth. Mi, fa, so, la, si, do. What kind of six? We consider do mi. As a third. If the third is major, this is a minor six. So, one and two. It is a major, a major third. Therefore, flipped round becomes a compound minor sixth. Or a minor thirteenth. Sol sharp, mm, la, double sharp. Sol la is a second, so it's a compound second. What type? Let's see. Sol sharp, la sharp would be major, plus one semitone, augmented. So, augmented. Now, let's do that again from sol sharp. Major, la sharp, augmented. What is key here to read this note, G sharp? If you read it G, you're going to make it wrong here. Hmm? A major second is also called a, an, oh, sorry, an augmented second is also called an augmented ninth. Two plus seven. Alto clef, treble clef plus one. Re becomes mi and it is flat. Mi flat. And this is, I don't know. Oh, we just count. Um, I just go from here. This is la in the alto clef, okay? Sol plus one, la, la, si, do, re, mi, fa, so sharp. Mm? So I, I start from what I know. Not down here, but up here. You can do it from Do, but it's complicated. Anyway, this is Sol plus one La. La, Si, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, so sharp. Now, Mi flat Sol is a third. Mi, Fa, Sol. Okay, so it's a compound third. What kind of third? E flat, one, two, that's a major third. But sharp, it's augmented. So one, two and a half. So not two but two and a half. So it's augmented. And a compound augmented third becomes an augmented tenth. Three plus seven. Base clef, similare, B flat. And this is Do, 
Do, re, mi, fa, sol. Sol. Is it flat? No. Similare. It's not flat, so it's natural. Si, sol is a sixth. Si, do, re, mi, fa, sol. Okay, so it's a sixth. Now, a sixth, let's flip it over. Um, so instead of B flat G, we consider G B flat. So I just write it here. And it's a third. What kind of third? Sol B flat. A major third would be two tones. And we have one and a half. So it's a minor third. A minor third flipped over becomes a major sixth. So this is a compound major six that becomes a major uh, 13th. So what did I do? I just consider the third. If the third is minor, the sixth is major. Last one, treble clef minus one equals tenor clef. So C is A flat, A sharp. And fa sharp is E sharp. Now, la sharp, la mi is a fourth. Mi, fa, sol, la. A perfect fourth is two tones and a half. So from here we have from la sharp one, two and a half. And this note is in fact mi sharp. Why is it not fa? Because if we call it fa, this is a th compound third. Fa, sol, la. We can't. It has to be a fourth. So, is a perfect fourth because we have la sharp, one, two and a half, mi sharp. Perfect fourth. Which be compound perfect fourth becomes a perfect eleventh. And with this, we have also finished the exercise number eight. Now we move on to exercise nine. Okay, in exercise nine, we need to write the written interval by adding a higher note. Augmented seventh, it's a diminished second downwards. So we need to write a D. Oh, we need our usual keyboard here. Maybe this, a this is a little bit too long. It is a bit too long, but anyway. Um, mi, re is a second. Sorry, uh, yes, it's a second. We need a diminished second. So mi re is a major second. To be diminished, we can't move this. So I raise up the D and make it sharp. Why can't we touch this? Because this is fixed in this case. Okay, we would in other contexts, but not in this. So mi, re is a major second, but we need a diminished second. So we need to raise up D. We make a D sharp, then we flip it over again. We write a nice D sharp here, and this is an augmented seventh. A compound major six. Okay, here we have a few steps. First of all, we consider the simple interval. Mm? A major sixth flipped over is a minor third below. So from Re, a third will be B. Mm? Now, a minor third from D is one tone and a half because a major is two tones. So let's make it major. One and two with B flat. But we need one and a half, so we raise up a semitone is B natural. Mm? Okay, we have found the simple interval now because the minor third flipped over 
here becomes a major 6. However, we need a compound major 6, so we raise this note up by an octave. And there you go. So we have three steps here. First, we find the minor third here. Then we flip it over and then we raise it up by an octave to make the interval compound. OK, and then we delete our notes. A perfect 11th is also called a perfect compound 4th. So, we need to make first a simple 4th and then we raise it by an octave. A perfect 4th from so sharp is two and a half semitones above. But first the name of the note, so, la, si, do, do. So we need to write a do, okay? I write it here because this is the simple interval. Uh, let's see what kind of do. From so sharp, two tones and a half. One, two and a half. So we need a sharp on do. Now, this is a perfect octave. We need a compound perfect octave. So the uh, above C sharp. This is it. Compound diminished fifth in bass clef. This is D, Re. So fifth from, from Re is La. Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La. So we write the note first of all. Okay. Now, uh, re la, we need a diminished fifth. Let's see, first from re we find the perfect fifth and then we take a semitone out. So, one, two, three and a half. So, re la would be a perfect interval, but we need it to be diminished. Sorry, this should have been written here because it's not compound yet. So to make it diminished, I need to add a flat. Mm? So, re, one, two, three and a half. And this is a perfect fifth. Now, to make it diminished, let's take one semitone out. We find la flat. Then, this is the simple interval. We raise this by an octave. So, la. Flat. Is it clear, guys? Can you let me know, please? Now, this is the alto clef, middle C. So, this is the one before, B. We need to write a major tenth. Now, a major tenth is a major... It's a compound major third, so much easier than we think. A compound major third from B, a major third is two tones apart. So first, the name of the notes, Si, Do, Re. We need to write a Re, and here it is. Hmm? Now, what kind of Re? Let's see. C, si, one and two. So, Re sharp. Why is this note not called E flat? Because if we call it E, we make this interval a fourth. And I did that again. This is the simple interval. So, uh, sharp, we said. Hmm? Because re, we need the sharp on Re. One and a half. And another half, two, D sharp. Now we raise it by an octave and we write here mm. 
Now, if you don't want to get confused, once you find the note, read it in treble clef if you are more familiar with the treble clef and then write it up, up uh, above. So this is do sharp in treble clef, so I write do sharp here, okay? That's what I would do. A minor third is also called a compound minor second. Do, si, b, and it's flat. B flat. A minor second from B flat is a semitone apart. So B flat, but we have to call it do. Ah, I was doing it again. We have to call it do. So B flat plus a semitone, well, a semitone above is do flat. Mm? So let's go in order also considering the major interval. Major interval from B flat is do minus one semitone, do flat. Okay, then we raise it up by an octave. And to do that, I consider this is a re and I write a re. And I add a flat. Okay, I hope this is clear. I hope I'm not confusing you by saying that I call it re flat in the end, but I think in treble clef just to be absolutely sure. And if you want, you can always double check. This is mi do si, so do, re, mi, fa. So, la, si, do flat. And this is what we wanted. You can always, always, always double check. You have two hours and a half to do the exam. And if you have spare time, I would go and check all the notes. Okay, we move on. So sharp, we need a compound minor six. Now, a minor six is a major third below. So, Sol, fa, mi. A major third below. It means two tones down from G sharp. One and two. Mi. So, a major third flipped over becomes a minor sixth. And if we raise it by an octave, it becomes a compound. So, one, two and three. Yeah, don't be scared of all these um, ledger lines. Count if you need. La, si, do, re, mi. An augmented 14th is a compound augmented 7th. Now a 7th flipped over is a 2nd, a diminished 2nd. So we need to find a diminished second from B. A diminished second from B, let's go to the major second first. La, La sharp minus one semitone is minor. From major becomes minor. La double sharp is diminished. So if we write here, La double sharp, this is the diminished second that we need. Then, as we did here, here, we raise it up, we flip it over and we write La double sharp here. And then we raise it up by an octave. And so, there you go. This is it and it's untidy, so I'll do that again. Okay, so let's do the whole thing again. We have a, an augmented 14th. An augmented 14th is a, an augmented a compound augmented 7th. Let's consider the simple interval. A com, an augmented 7th is flipped over, is a, a, a diminished 2nd. Okay, so I found a diminished second down from B. Major, minor, diminished, A double sharp. Then I, I flipped it over and I found the augmented seventh. Then I raise it 
raised it by a an octave because I need a compound augmented seventh. And I hope that this is clear. Compound diminished third from do sharp. Diminished third, one and two. So mi sharp would be, first of all, the note. So do, re, mi. Okay. Now, one, two. This is the major third. Minor and diminished. So we have to call it e, and it's mi flat hmm? from do sharp. And I did that again. Oh, sorry, guys. Okay, from here, raise it up by a an octave. And there you go. Compound diminished third is do sharp, mi flat. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Tenor clef is treble clef minus one. So this is so flat. And we need an augmented ninth or an augmented, a compound augmented second. From G flat, an, a major second would be A flat. We need an augmented, so A natural. So sol, la, that's it. Hmm? Because sol, la flat would be major, la natural would be augmented. Do we need a natural? No, because we don't have a key signature. So you can write it, but it's unnecessary. So you just have to raise it up by an octave. And this is it. A diminished fifteenth, that's twice an octave, is a compound diminished octave. My favourite. <laughs> Do we need to know what this note is? Yes and no. Anyway, alto clef plus one, so this is do. Do here is a perfect octave. We need to reduce the distance. So we need a flat up by an octave. Sorry, untidy. When I'm on the edge of the page, it's complicated. So diminished 15th from B, from C to C flat. There you go. We're nearly there. Shall we move on to the exercise 10? And I hope this was clear, guys. Let me know, please, if not. These intervals are, I understand, complicated. But if you go, if you approach them step by step, and if you think in maths, I think that that's easier. Exercise 10 now. We need to decide which one of these listed intervals is ours. So we need to identify the interval, basically. This is B and this is E sharp. So B, E sharp. And this is a fourth. What kind of fourth? Again, we need our keyboard. Okay, so a fourth, a perfect fourth is two tones and a half. So one, two and a half and then we have another half. So it's augmented. Let's do that again. One, two and a half. 
and another half is an augmented fourth but it's compound because it's bigger than an octave so it's compound augmented fourth or an augmented eleventh and here it is that's one way, one way of doing it we can also exclude things if you want and we'll I'll do this here so this is in the alto, alto clef it's treble clef plus one this is C middle C so this is B flat and you can count from middle C but I know that this is plus one so it's fa is sol double flat a C sol is a sixth six C do re mi fa sol six so we can exclude augmented fifth and we have three options now augmented minor or diminished um, either of them can do it because the six could be major or minor and therefore augmented and diminished but let's see B flat G double flat now let's flip it over and we have G double flat here okay so instead of C sol we consider so C uh, we start from B flat that is the normal more normal note we need to identify what type of third it is a major third is two tones apart so one and two. Now G flat would be a major third, but it's double flat, so it's augmented. Okay, one, two and a half. Augmented third. The augmented third flipped over becomes a diminished sixth. And that is the answer. Now, on this one, I think I would use the exclusion as well. Let's do that. It might be useful. Tenor clef is treble clef minus one. So this is La and this is B flat. La B flat is a second. OK, so we can exclude the third. And it is a just a semitone apart. So it is minor a minor second hmm? one semitone and this is all done now because I know that you need it guys I'm going to do the challenge so shall we move on to the next page as soon as possible I will create a video about the intervals or a series of videos about intervals and this should clarify lots of things okay the challenge is now we need to identify the intervals. This is exactly the same thing that we've been doing for the whole chapter, but it looks different because it's a piece of music by Rachmaninoff, beautiful one. And we have lots of flats. It doesn't matter because you just need to call the names as they are. That's all. This is D flat and this is Mi. Re flat, Mi. As usual, I need the keyboard and I would write it um, here okay re flat me it is a seventh so what do we do we flip it over me goes above here mm? natural so me re flat what kind of second it is mi re is a major second but flat is augmented now an augmented second becomes a diminished seventh so diminished seventh mm. let's do that again a seventh needs to become a second so I flip it over me instead of here raise it up and I consider D flat 
me. One and a half. So it's a, an augmented seventh because D flat, E flat would be a um, major second plus one semitone is augmented. The augmented second flipped over becomes a diminished seventh. Okay, number two. Sol flat, this is important guys. I know it's because I know the flats, but similare sol, okay? You can count them, you can write them down. Anything that helps you go straight to the right notes. Mi double flat. Now, sol mi is a six. So la, si, do, re, mi is a six, okay? So sixth, what kind of six? Let's flip it over. Let's find the third. Hmm? Mi double flat. So flat from here, a major third would be two tones apart. So one and two. Mi double flat. That's it. Sol, fa flat, so flat, fa flat, mi double flat. So mi double flat, sol is a major third. If flipped over, becomes a minor six. Okay. It sounded complicated, but it isn't. When you think it that way. The third example, sol la flat, mm? a flat is a semitone. So it is simply a minor second because a major second is one tone, a semitone is a minor second. The fourth example is fa flat and la. Now this is a six and we flip it over. Fa flat, la, above here. Now, la, so fa flat, okay, well, let's start from la. La, let's see what kind of third. One, two and a half. So instead of the two tones that make a major third, we have two tones and a half. So one, two and a half. So it is an augmented third. An augmented third flipped over becomes a diminished sixth. Okay, major becomes minor, diminished becomes augmented. Finished, excellent. Let's move on to the second one. In the tenor clef, ah, help, help. No, you don't need it. It's treble clef minus one. And the sharps. Fa, do, sol, okay? Fa, do, sol. Do minus one is B. Ignore, please, what is written on the score. And la minus one is G sharp in this case. This is a compound interval because it's more than an octave. We just make it simple and then we write compound. It's a sixth. So what do we do? We flip it over and we consider si re. Let's see what kind of third it is. One and a half. So it is a minor third and a minor third flipped over becomes a major sixth. Now, this is, because this is a compound interval, it's a compound major six. Now, this could be also called a major thirteenth. And let's move on to the next one. Uh, C minus one is la, 
and re minus one is do and do is sharp. Do sharp la, it is a compound interval, so we can write compound here. Oh, sorry, that's number two. Compound. Mm. Now, what kind of um, number, uh, interval number do we have? Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la is a sixth. What kind of six? Let's see. Let's make it a third. We consider it as la, do sharp. La, do sharp is one and two tones. It's a major third. But if we flip it over, it becomes a minor sixth. Mm? So it's a compound minor six or a minor thirteenth. Okay. So let's do that again. La, do sharp, okay, it's a compound interval, so is a six, we flip it over, we make it a third and we calculate what kind of third it is. We found out that it's a major third, la, do sharp, so if we flip it over, it becomes a minor sixth. And compound minus six is a minor thirteenth. Next one. We have fa minus one is mi, and so double sharp becomes fa double sharp. So mi fa double sharp. It is still a compound. Uh, I think all of them are compounds. So. Compound, and then it's a second. Mi fa double sharp. Let's see. Mi fa sharp, that's one tone, is a major second. Fa double sharp is augmented. So, augmented second. Compound augmented second, which becomes an augmented ninth. Sorry. Two plus seven. The fourth example, this is Do minus one is C, Fa sharp minus one is E sharp. C, Mi sharp. So Mi sharp C. Mi, Fa, Sol, La, C is a fifth. So compound. Fifth. What type of fifth? The fifth is three tones and a half. Let's have a look from B. One, two, three and a half. But me is sharp, so it's three. So it is a diminished interval. Compound diminished fifth or diminished twelfth. The last one. Mi minus one is re, and it's not sharp, but this one is sharp. So re, re sharp. My favorite, the octaves. Compound. Now the octave is not the same, but it's distanced. So it's augmented. Or, so compound, augmented octave, or augmented 15th. And the challenge, the second challenge is done for you. And with this, we can end this video. Thank you. Bye. I hope this video was helpful. I just want to thank all the ones who messaged me and emailed me. It has been great to be in touch with you, honestly. And if you have anything to say, you know, leave me a comment. I always read them and I always reply. Now, if you want to revise other chapters of Discovering Music Theory Grade 5, click there and find other tutorials. And don't forget, tell your friends about it. If it was helpful for you, it will be helpful for other people. Happy watching! I'll see you in my next video. Bye!